Hello folks and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be showing you a bit of a break fix video here for a FlashForge Creator Pro where the logic board does not work and resulting in the, um, in the actual 3D printer not booting up properly. All right, so go ahead and pay attention to the LCD display as I power it on here. We have uh, two like set of bar lines, maybe kind of tricky to see at that angle. But as you can see, we have like two different sets of bar lines. It's not actually saying anything. The lights up at the top of the printer are not turning on. And of course, it's just uh, sitting there. The fan is spinning up. That's about it. It doesn't really progress past this point, no matter how long you wait. So what do you do? Well, there's either one or two things. You can try resetting the logic board, which I'll try first, but you may have to end up actually replacing either the board and or the LCD panel itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you all through the process of um, troubleshooting this particular issue here. So I'm gonna go ahead and power it off, unplug the unit for safety, and then I'm gonna turn it over so the backside is facing forward. All right, so now I have the machine turned over on its side. Now, what I want to do here first is I want to go ahead and remove the, uh, there should be a total of about six different Allen head screws here. So, yep, yeah, just going to go ahead and remove them all. Now, this issue, unfortunately, is a common issue with this particular board that is in these printers. It is also the same board shared with a lot of MakerBot model printers, which, uh, yeah, apparently they're, it's called a Mighty Board. Not much, not so mighty when it uh, decides to fail whenever it experiences slight ESD or electrostatic discharge. And I have actually resolved this issue once by uh, grounding the unit or the actual board along with the LCD, but that particular fix does not seem to be working any longer. Don't know what's going on. Actually, it did happen to me a, or a, a few months ago, and I was able to just like reset the board and it was fine, but that doesn't seem to be fixing it this time, unfortunately. Okay, so now that we have our panel removed, we'll put it in a safe place along with the screws. It doesn't look too dusty, that's good. Not a whole lot of debris and stuff, so. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and run over with, with this with a fine tooth comb. Oh, snap. So as you can see here with this uh, close up, there is definitely a burnt connection here. Let's go through the board. Another problem is there should be a voltage regulator like this guy here looks okay. There's uh, some other circuitry around here that we want to pay attention to. See if there's any burning on this side. So there is definitely some cookage going on. That is the heated print bed. Ooh. All right, so let's go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the board off here. Before I do that, I want to make sure I mark these connections. Got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is, is that, of course, I have to do a lot more work than I intended to, which sucks and uh, is good for the video as well. So what happened was, as you saw previously, this connector is uh, pretty much dead on both ends. The reason is, is because more than likely this wire is uh, pretty chintzy. This is carrying the full current to the bed. I don't like when wires are this thin and carrying uh, a f pretty high current. I mean, it's at least like gonna be around like eight or nine amps worth of current going through like 12 to 20, probably about 24 volts. It's probably, so yes, quite a bit of current. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just undo this cluster of wires here. Try to get it, oh, there we go, neat. My goal is to basically just uh, take out the existing bed wiring, at least the uh, positive and negative, the temperature sensor stuff, that can stay, that's fine. But these wires need to go, they need to be replaced with something a little bit more thicker. See, I've just got the uh, other end here as well. Undoing this here, zip tie, unhook the uh, connector from the bed, it's just, of course, the uh, red and the black leads, so, okay. It's got the cable out. So I'm just getting some equal uh, wire here. So now I need to find a way to get off the uh, leads and these connectors here and remove them. Usually there's like a little pull tab. It's kind of hard to really show on camera. So you'll just have to, uh, there's, there's probably videos online on how to do it anyway. Let's go ahead and pop these bad boys off. All right, folks, so I got uh, the or this little connector taken care of here. So what I'm doing here now is I'm warming up the soldering iron. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be soldering one of these onto the board that'll just interface directly with our new wires. And of course, I'm also going to be marking one of the wires with a bit of silver Sharpie. So that'll be our positive, this silver marked one. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip the ends here real quick. Safety goggles on, I'm gonna try to poke this 
open with my little scribe tool I have. Hopefully I can recover this connector without damaging or else I'll have to take the board off and solder directly onto it, which that's not going to be fun. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather just plug it in. Oh, there we go. Not too bad. I'm just going to go ahead and solder the new connector in because I think it's a little too big. Plus, this has already been crimped, so it's going to be weak anyway. So, yep, just try to remove this as much as I can. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, good clean break there. I'm going to go ahead and clamp this with my wire helpers here and 10 both sides. Get them flexed up nice and good. Again, this connector probably isn't made for this heavy of gauge of wire, unfortunately, but I will make do. There's like a little notch here I need to press out once I finish testing it, but once it's cooled down, I'll go ahead and just run it through and see if it connects all right. Yeah, it looks like it fits all the way, so that's fine. Poking this metal tab back up that I bent back while I was freeing it from the this plastic enclosure. Okay, there we go. Sweet. One end's in. Pop this one in, fingers crossed. A little tight, but nonetheless, we got it. Do a good pull test, and ta-da, there we go. We got our connector. So I'm gonna go ahead and loop it to, or plug it into the bed again. Okay, so yep, it just plugs into the back of the bed here. You see those little uh, connectors next to that multicolored connector there. Just gotta get it in there. So these are our two bed leads. Like I said, I have this little guy here. I'm gonna solder that into the new board. So now that I have everything ready for the new board, let's go ahead and fire up our soldering iron. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the board out. And what I'm gonna have to do here is I have to uh, desolder this little connector because it's right now it's pretty useless because of course I don't have a replacement uh, male connector in for this. So prop up this guy here. Gotta add some new solder in so we can get the old solder kind of jumps kick started. Can't have this thing moving around when I'm trying to use the pump gun. Just gonna make that pump gun utterly useless. Okay, hopefully that'll be better. Folks went ahead and got our little connector taken care of here, so we are good to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wire this brand new board, of course, I, like I said, this is a brand new board, back into here. Another thing I do wanna note, um, I'll go ahead and show you all the old board, which I may go ahead and do it just to be thorough, is you see this little, uh, these little USB ground connectors up here, they're just these two bigger solder points near the USB port. I actually soldered and then hot glued a, uh, a ground lead to it. So I'm, I'm probably gonna use the same exact ground lead in this uh, board here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap that over. So I got a few things connected up here already. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt the board back on here. Try to get everything lined up as best I can. One thing I definitely want to recommend is um, yeah, go ahead and take pictures of everything before you do it. I did, thank goodness, because you will need them. Now we have everything connected. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the machine in and I'm gonna see if it uh, cooperates with us. So now I'm gonna go ahead and power on the machine and show you all what the LCD panel should look like. So it'll say something about Sailfish and Flash Forge Creator Pro, the two lines and of course the beeping, that's the uh, signature of telling that your printer is working properly. Now, since I, ha I have basically uh, disconnected and reconnected everything, I wanna go ahead and make sure everything works properly. Just gonna go ahead and check our end stops here. Okay, everything seems to work, end stops and all. There you have it, folks. That is how you swap the board on a Flash Forge Creator Pro, along with uh, doing a couple modifications to make sure the heater bed wire is not going to catch on fire. Definitely want to make sure your uh, heated print bed wiring is always beefed up as much as possible, especially when you start seeing it signs of burning and whatnot, because definitely do not want that stuff catching on fire. 
power that off. It's a little bit loud. So I want to tell you all a bit of tips of preventing uh, shorts from this happening. Uh, this particular Mighty Board is susceptible to e electrostatic discharge, e otherwise known as ESD. Now the first thing you want to make sure you want to do is uh, you want to make sure that everything is grounded properly. Um, that's number one priority. Another thing is try not to manually move the Z axis or the X and Y axis with your hands because that'll create a reverse current stepper motor, which may fry the board. So if you do do that, go really slowly and be very careful. And pretty much that's gonna be about it for today's video here. Hope you all liked it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button, consider subscribing and check out some other videos showing up on the left here. Have a great day.